This is a middle loop quick 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 class. Hi, I'm Jerry with Middle Loop, and today, part one on making this aerial time lapse. In order to create this video, we developed a number of techniques and learned a few lessons along the way. If you haven't seen it yet, you can tap the link that just popped up above. We'll provide it again at the end and in the description. This is a two part series. In today's video, part one, we'll show the setup and capturing of the video and images. In part two, we cover our technique for producing the final video. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing. And if you find this video useful, tapping that like button helps others find it too. We'll start out with an overview and why this type of time lapse can be challenging. Then we'll get into it. Since we're using a drone, repeatability is key, so we'll talk about using waypoints. First, the initial setup, and then we'll get into some additional settings that we recommend. Finally, running the missions and some considerations there. Now, let's get started. This is not your traditional time lapse. Typically, time lapse is shot over a much shorter period of time from a camera that's mounted in a fixed position and frames that are shot seconds or minutes apart. In our time lapse, images were captured from a drone at an altitude of about 100 feet off the ground with each image or frame captured days or even weeks apart. From start to finish, we captured images over a period of more than a year. So as you might expect, this introduces a number of challenges that you wouldn't normally find in traditional time lapse. In this video, we'll be providing some tips and considerations on what you can do to help with the positioning of the camera, as well as how to deal with the vast variety in the lighting conditions you're likely to run into. Ideally, you'd be able to set up the camera on a tripod and leave it untouched from the first frame to the last. Well, that doesn't really work when capturing images at over 100 feet off the ground. So what can you do to compensate when using a drone? When using a drone, especially over such a long period of time, the key is to try to get the drone's camera into the exact same position in a repeatable flight mission. For this, we'll be using a feature called Waypoints. Now, the drone we use to produce our video is the DJI Mavic 3 Cine, which has this feature built in. Many do. You could also use a third-party application that does the same thing. Of course, you'll need to check to make sure that your drone is compatible. In this video, we don't go into details on how to set up a waypoint mission. We have a number of videos which do. In fact, we have a complete series on the topic. The video we did on setting up a waypoint mission on site is probably most relevant. And again, we've provided a link at the end and in the description. When we were planning our time lapse, there were a couple of things we hadn't decided yet. We didn't know whether we'd be using still photos or full motion video. You can use either, and we wanted to see what we ended up with before making that decision. We also didn't know which angle we wanted of the subject in our final video. Remember, the building we were capturing didn't exist yet. We knew where it was going to be built, and most importantly, we knew the height and basic footprint. But we didn't know if other construction would end up blocking our view. I mean, the whole neighborhood was under construction, and there was a real possibility that the angle we chose could be obstructed in the future. So in order to keep our options open, we set up two missions, one for capturing video and the other for photos. These missions were, for the most part, identical, meaning the waypoints, all nine of them, were exactly at the same coordinates. In fact, after setting up the first one, we simply made a copy of it. Then we went back and modified each so that one captured video and the other photos. We'll be showing you all of this a little later. But before setting up that first mission, we needed to know what height we're going to shoot at. To help with that, we were fortunate in that there was a fully constructed model of this building nearby. Using that building, we decided to shoot at a height of about 100 feet off the ground. Now that we knew the height that we wanted to use, it was time to set the waypoints. And this we did on site. First, we scoped out and identified the location that we'd use to launch the drone. And since we want to use the same exact spot every time we ran the mission, it was important to find a place that would be easily identifiable so we can find it in the future, permanent, meaning it would always be there and wouldn't move, always accessible, and there were no obstructions overhead like trees or wires. For this mission, we chose some sort of plastic utility cover, probably for fiber. For the first waypoint, we started up the drone and waited a couple seconds for the home point to be established. The home point has been updated. 
Please check it on the map. Then we launched it and sent it straight up overhead to the height that we identified earlier. In our case, about 100 feet. And this is where we set our first waypoint. In the series we did on waypoints that we mentioned earlier, we explain why we launch from the same spot on the ground and why we always place our first waypoint directly over the launch spot. Check it out if you're interested in the details. As you'll see a little later, we'll also be returning to this same waypoint at the end of our mission. Since we didn't know what angle we would eventually use in our time-lapse video, we set up our waypoints to completely encircle the construction site. We put one waypoint on each of the corners and one on each of the four sides for a total of nine waypoints, which allowed for a lot of flexibility during post-production. Okay, so after setting up that waypoint straight overhead, we then flew to the first coordinate where we would begin capturing images. Once there, we framed up the shot, including the tilt of the gimbal, and set the waypoint. Then we flew to the remaining coordinates setting those waypoints. With all nine waypoints set, we landed the drone and saved the mission. Then, as we said earlier, we saved the second copy. For each of these copies, we chose a name that indicated one was for video and the other for still photos. Now, I should note that the drone we used is not RTK compatible, meaning it uses basic GPS to position the drone each time it's run. Now, GPS is okay, but it could be different plus or minus several feet or even more each time it's run. This can be challenging when lining up the images and our video in post-production. We'll cover all of that in detail in part two of the series. I mentioned RTK because that technology is far superior when positioning the drone. RTK can provide accuracy within a centimeter, making post-production much easier. But for those who don't have RTK technology, here's a tip. Give your waypoints a 25 to 50% fudge factor. In other words, once you've framed up your shot at each coordinate the way you want it to look, move your drone back from the subject 25 to 50% and raise it up a little, effectively capturing more of the surrounding area around your subject. So for example, if the ideal framing is 100 feet from your subject, you'll want to back it up at least another 25 feet. This way, when producing your final video, which we'll show in part two, you'll electronically zoom in or be scaling and cropping the images to get the framing back to where you want it. By adding this fudge factor, it'll give you plenty of room on the edges to align your images without running out of the frame. We also recommend using your drone's maximum resolution when recording. This way, when zooming in electronically during post-production, it'll minimize the deterioration of the image quality. To recap, at this point, we now have two identical waypoint missions saved. So far, only the names are different. Now it's time to take each of those missions and alter them so that one will be used for video and the other for photos. This next part can be done off-site. In fact, you don't even need the drone to do it, just the controller. With the controller on, open the DJI Fly app and tap on Connection Guide. Next, select the drone you were using when you created the missions and tap on Camera View. And now select the Waypoint icon. We're first going to work on the mission that we created for capturing video. To load it, tap that little history icon in the lower left. Now if you're not seeing it, it's possible that it's minimized. You may have to tap that little down arrow first and then you should be able to see and tap on the history icon. Here, you should find the two copies of the mission you created. Tap the thumbnail of the one you want to edit. Like I said, we're starting with the one for capturing video. Okay, with the waypoint mission loaded, let's set it up so it automatically starts recording video when it gets to that first waypoint. Tap on the icon for the first waypoint. As you can see, the camera action is already highlighted and it currently has no action set. Scroll over to the right if you need to and tap Start Recording. Now tap on the back arrow. Next, let's add a camera action at the end to stop recording. Tap on the last waypoint and this time select Stop Recording for the camera action. And again, tap that back arrow. That's it for changes to the actual waypoints. Now let's go ahead and change some of the global settings for the mission. Tap on the three dots on the right. The first global setting we want to set is what happens at the end. As we mentioned, we wanted the drone to return back to the first waypoint. To do that, set the end of flight action. If it's not already highlighted, tap on it and then select Back to Start. 
Next, we want to tell the drone what to do if the controller and the drone lose their connection. Our preference is to have the drone continue and complete the mission, so we'll select Continue. If you're interested in our reasoning behind these choices, it's all explained in that other video we referenced earlier. While we're here, notice this is also where you go to set the global speed for the mission. This is the speed the drone travels between waypoints. Ours defaulted to about 5.5 miles per hour, which is good. Since we're shooting video in this mission, that should make for a nice smooth, slow rotation around our subject. So we're just going to leave it where it is. Ok, that's all the changes we're going to make for the video version of the mission. Let's back out, then back to the history page and save our changes. Now let's go and make the changes to the waypoint mission that we set aside for photos. This one has a number of different settings. Tap on its thumbnail. Ok, so this time we'll be taking photos at each of the waypoints starting with number 2. Tap on the icon for the second waypoint and change the camera action to Take Photo. And then do this for all remaining waypoints. Ok, that's great. We also think, when taking photos, it's a pretty good idea to have the drone come to a complete stop at each waypoint before taking the photo. To do that, tap and drag the menu to the right exposing the hover option. Tap on it and then drag the slider until hover reads 1 second. Let's apply this change to all of the waypoints. To do that, simply tap Apply to All. When prompted to confirm, tap OK. And that's it for the changes to the waypoints themselves. Tap that back icon and once again tap the three dots for global settings. Now last time, you'll remember we left global speed at about 5.5 miles per hour. Nice and slow for video. But this time, especially since we're bringing the drone to a stop before taking the photo, there's no need to go slow between waypoints. Tap on the global speed option and then drag the slider to increase the speed. This way, it'll race ahead to the waypoint, come to a stop, take the photo and then race ahead to the next one. This mission will take a fraction of the time compared to the video version. Not like we did before, let's change the end of flight setting to back to start and the signal loss setting to continue. And that's it, save the mission. Exposure, resolution and aspect ratio settings are not retained by the waypoint mission. In other words, you'll need to set or at least check these settings before running the mission each time. With each frame of the time lapse being shot days or weeks apart, getting the lighting right can be challenging. Even if the exposure is correct, you're still dealing with different weather conditions. On sunny days, you'll have shadows. On overcast days, the lighting will be flat. All of this can be distracting to the viewer when you want their attention to be focused on the building. We'll be sharing some techniques in part 2 when editing that will help with this greatly, but there are a couple things you can do while capturing the images. We recommend using automatic exposure settings. Now there could be something out of the ordinary going on, like maybe snow on the ground that can cause your images to be underexposed. So you may need to compensate, but for the most part, simply using automatic exposure will work just fine. If possible, try shooting when the weather conditions are similar. Ideally shoot on overcast days. This will help get rid of shadows. Of course, you may not have much choice here, but it's something to consider. Now you might think that for the most consistent lighting conditions, you'd simply shoot at the same time of day. Well, that may not work, especially if you're shooting over a long period of time, which could be months, or in our case, a year. For example, if you choose to always shoot at 5 p.m., that might be great in the summer, but in the winter, 5 p.m. could already be dark. So when we say time of day, I mean time relative to when the sun is at its peak. The peak, also known as solar noon, would be ideal. But just try to be consistent, like an hour past solar noon or before. We've put a link in the description that'll tell you exactly when solar noon is for your location on any given date. Now that all the hard work is done, running your waypoint mission is pretty simple. Place your drone at the launch point you identified. Turn it and the controller on and load the waypoint mission. Make sure the aspect ratio, resolution and exposure are set where you want them. Then, start up the rotors and wait for the drone to establish its home points. Next, we prefer to launch the drone manually to get it up in the air to at least 10 or 20 feet before starting the waypoint mission. To start the waypoint mission, tap the next button on the right. Then tap go. And that's it. It'll run the mission and return to that spot right overhead when it's done, where you can then land it manually. So that's it for this quick class. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button and don't forget part 2 in this series. 
Here are the other videos we referenced. Thank you, have a great day, and happy flying.